I hit myself in the head so many times, and I'm like, you know what? This guy's so true, man. Appreciate your your show and and all that you do for for getting guys uh, on straight and narrow. If you can hear Tom's voice, you better listen up. You better listen up good because he has got this thing nailed. Tom, Tom, listen. Uh, I was just hearing the advice that you were giving the other guy, and man, you know what you're talking about, buddy. 21 years old, and uh, I just want to tell you that MySpace girls are so easy. Oh like, yes. I actually have a MySpace girl booty call on my lunch break today. <laughs> <laughs> Did she show you where her space was? Girls love the bad boys. For some that's reason. just the way it is. That's why I am a bad boy. And that's why I love you, Tom. There we go, Katie. I know. Next time you decide to be really bad when I'm in town, let me know. I know. Sign the rap. I'll sign you right up. I won't even use ink, if you know what I mean. I've been married for 28 years, and about three years ago, my wife was saying how she's going to leave me, you know, because uh, she was bored. So I just started treating her the way that uh, you talked about, and uh, boy, things turned around real quick. Oh, did they really? Yeah. You know, I started kind of being an a-hole, and uh, boy, she turned around real quick. You know, of course, she's going to miss out on, like you say, the paycheck and a little security there. So uh, thanks for listening to you. Things worked out pretty good. I took your advice and I DTD'd. How did that work out? Did she freak? Actually, yeah, she did. She told me she was going to kill me and everything. I love when they say that. Oh, yeah, and I told her. I said, go ahead and cry for me. I'm over it, and I want to see your tears. Ooh, I like your style. Thank you. Well, I learned it from you. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said hello. Yes, hi. Now I'm saying nothing. Oh, Okay. Waiting for you to begin talking. Oh, I was just calling earlier about the, like, you made the comment about... You were about calling me. earlier? I mean, are you calling now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, who were you calling early? I was calling you guys. <laughs> well, you said you were calling early. Well, yeah. Did I already well, talk to you? No, I haven't talked to you yet, but I, okay, I called for the reason Oh, that I mean, that's I, like those people who pre-board the flight at the airport? How can you pre-board? But how do you, what do you board before you board? <laughs> You know what? The Angels are uh, a force to beckon with. Uh, that's, that's true. There's 16 games up. Force to beckon gotta, with, yes. Oh, but also, Tom, you got to look back at when... Um, all intents and purposes. Uh, I do believe in Guardian Angels. You do. So what so happened to the Guardian day. Angels of the people on Metrolink? You know, Tom, I don't know what happened to their Guardian Angels that day, but I know that... They all them, took the day off? They didn't take their day off, but the people that survived Maybe, it, Maybe the Guardian yeah. Angels were sending a text message. You can get herpes uh, when you use a condom, but it's much less likely. Yeah, well, I do have a newly formed bump sensor. My question is, you know, what's my course of action after that? Well, you well, might have to move to New York because one out of four people's got the herpes there. No, I love my West Coast. <laughs> you know, they got, uh, when they said in New York, they got more culture out there. Uh, <laughs> they didn't tell you that culture was under a microscope. How do you not know you stink like that? I don't know. I mean, even men can get that way. But yes, I know women can. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I won't go there. Come on. Just take a hose and hose it down. There's something called douche. <laughs> That's right. I was saying that to Dean the other day. <laughs> How disgusting. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Stay off drugs, Minotaur! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-8. Six, six. It's Friday, and Friday on the Tom Likas Show means our telephones are wide open to all comers. Especially today, anyone who thinks they're not part of the target audience. I'll talk to anybody. You have to meet up with the same requirements of being fascinating. 
You have to be fair game, but uh, we're opening it up to all comers. So even if you think you're not part of the audience, old people, women, children, uh, whatever, religious people, whatever you are, fans of the Carpenters, are there any of those anymore? I don't know. There are people, believe it or not. There was a Carpenters box set, and somebody bought that. Hard to believe, I know. But nonetheless, we'll take calls from anybody. No matter who it is. All you need to do is call this telephone number, 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Lee on the Tom Like Your Show, hello. Hello, Father. Hello, Lee. Got kind of a situation here. All right. I'm still uh, banging my ex-wife. Why? Desperate? Dumb. Because you're young, dumb, and full of enthusiasm. Yeah, we've uh, we got divorced. Actually, uh, served her up some divorce papers last year in October. She served me up a restraining order. Actually, to tell you the truth, I was on my way out the door, and she slapped us, I'm pregnant, test on the bed and said, I'm keeping it. And I said, no, you're not. She said, yes, I am. So I stayed, stuck around, tried to make it work, too much fighting, too much arguing. I was on my way out. Obviously, the only way out is to get a lawyer. So I slapped her with some divorce papers. She slapped me with a restraining order. Then I slapped her with a real attorney, ended up serving her in court with the restraining order and lots of visitation from my daughter. Things were going good for a little while, you know, doing the old visits, visits here, visits there. Ended up finding a new girlfriend. She found out about it. Started getting all crazy. Why do you care? Well... I don't know why I care, Tom. Let me add something else. You know, once she used pregnancy to try to manipulate you, that's the end of having sex with her. But, you know, Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm 37 and I'm in my prime. Anything that comes around, it seems like I just can't stop myself. Well, you got a problem. See a doctor. Because, you yeah, because you got no game. No game, huh? Obviously you have no game. What do you mean by no game? You don't have the ability to pick up hot chicks. So instead you go back to somebody who you know will put out. So now I try to get away from her and I get this old crazy, crazy lady. Blah, 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 blah. Crazy, psycho. You picked her, pal. That's it, huh? Didn't you pick her? I sure did, Tom. Well, there you go. What do I do? Well, ever heard of caller ID? Yes, sir. Use it. What about my visitation with my little baby? Well, <laughs> guess what? You got yourself into that predicament, too. Here you were about to leave. You're having unprotected sex with her. Yes. Stupid. <laughs> Man. You don't even take yourself seriously. Why should I take you seriously? For Christ's sake. Cindy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, my qu I have a twofold question. The first part is um, I'm 22 and um, I just moved out to Santa Monica from Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, what does I, that have to do with anything? Nothing. I just <laughs> I just moved here from the Northeast. It took 21 seconds to get it in. Well, because I'm saying I just because got everybody here, so who I comes from the Northeast. Make sure to tell us that they're from the Northeast because they believe they are superior to us savages who live here on the West Coast. <laughs> no, I really like it here. My, my point of telling that is just that I have a, a boy. You like it here, but you believe being from Cambridge, Massachusetts makes you somehow superior to the rest of us. So you enjoy walking the beach and watching the local gorillas walking around out there. But you know in your smug little head that being from Cambridge is far, far more impressive than being from of Santa Monica. Well, I chose to move here, you know, so. For the weather, but you still believe that Cambridge is, in some way, superior. <laughs> Perhaps, but 
tell you. There that. we go. My point is, I just moved here a few months ago, and I, I've been dating this guy since I got here, and um, I have been single for, you know, all through college I was single, and I loved it, and I was kind of, you know, hooking up with a lot of guys and going out on dates and, you know, with lots of different guys, and I loved it, um, and I haven't really wanted a boyfriend until I met this great guy, and he... Um, but he's, he's older than me. He's 29 years old, and I'm only 22. So I'm just a, my question, I guess, is just, I know you're, like, anti-relationship and everything, but for the first time in, like, three or four years, I really, like, always want to be around him. He's really, he's really smart, and he's really down to earth. He has a really sweet job, and he's all hooked up, and I just, I would love to be in a Why relationship. Why can't you just date him? I am dating him. And why can't you just date him? Oh, you mean without having him be my boyfriend? Right. Well, because it's like for the first time in a while, I've just really, I don't want to date anyone else. Like people ask me on dates Ugh. and I'll think I would rather hang out with him, you know? And I don't really want him to see anyone else. It makes me uncomfortable thinking about, you know, if he were to go on dates with other girls. So I, I really want to be in a relationship with him. My my question is just, one, you know, he's almost 30, so do, do people still have relationship talks? Like should I still bring up? Hey, am I your girlfriend? Or do you think that that's just kind of... Guys hate that conversation. What am I to you? Am I your girlfriend? Am I your booty call? What am I? Am I your, like, fiancé? Am I just some friend of yours with benefits? What am I? It's true. I mean, I know when that people, a I put it this way: when people ask you about, about Cindy, and they say, like, yeah, you you talk about Cindy. What do you tell them? Do you tell them I'm your friend? Do you tell them that you're just having sex with me? Or I have to know what you tell people. That's totally right. I mean, that's what I'm afraid of sounding like. But that is what you're going to sound like. <laughs> but by the same token, like. I'm pretty down to earth. He knows me. I, I don't whine, you know, like a lot of other girls. You're so, gonna sound like it when you start asking know. these questions. What should I do? Should I just kind of let Can't it go? Can't you just enjoy it the way like, it hey. is? Just enjoy it the way it is. And if he wants more, he'll tell you. Okay, that kind of answers my my second question too, which was also I, I'm not, I haven't been in a serious relationship for a while, and I I'm not really. Um, you know, I'm I'm young. I wouldn't think to think about marriage till I, you know, ten years or something. Right. Whereas he's much older, and he, I don't really want to waste his time. Like that kind of makes me nervous. I've never dated anyone or, or really connected with anyone who's you know seven or eight years older than me. So I just, um, darling, it, 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 later in life, that's really not that much of a difference. You know, if you're 25 and he's 32, that's not a big deal. Right, but it is now just because the whole, you know, the reason I brought up that I just moved out here is because I did just move out here. It's like it's a new city, and I'm getting adjusted, and it's kind of strange that right off the bat, you know. Yes, but people who move here from Tupelo, Mississippi, don't say, well, I just got to Santa Monica from Tupelo. <laughs> uh, I guess you're right. I mean, you're right. But people in the Northeast important. think that they are more refined than we are. They're better than we are. And uh, <laughs> although they like the weather here, they think we're a bunch of savages. Savages? I don't think savages. By the way, you want to see savages? Watch ESPN Sunday night, the last game at Yankee Stadium. I'm going to be there. Oh, wow. Um, you can see uh, you can see New York culture on display. Interesting. I will watch it, but probably not because I hate the Yankees. Yankees stop. <laughs> and of course, you're going to tell everybody now you're a Red Sox fan, and we're all supposed to be impressed with that too. <laughs> I told you guys from Massachusetts. You know, you know who's really good? The Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, I don't care that much about baseball. It's not really that well, big a deal. I just take Tampa the Bay all the way. <laughs> um, well, anyway, so do you think I should just not bring it up and just, you know. My opinion, honestly and... speaking, having nothing to do with what I think about what guys should do. You know, if you want to keep a guy, one way to keep it is not to be the naggy girlfriend. Right. And you're going to sound like it the minute you start asking questions like that. I mean, it is what it is. What, Does mean, it need a name? Bring it up in like a down to earth way. Like, so, you know, we've been dating for a few months and I just kind of want to know, are you a commitment phobe? <laughs> Again, see, you're putting him on the defensive by saying something like that. You're okay. going to sound like the nagging girlfriend. And that's a turnoff for guys. 
know, so I can just kind of wait. If like, what you have is good, just enjoy what you have. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, it isn't as good as you say it is. No, it's fantastic. I just well, then you know. it's not going to improve by asking him that stupid question. <laughs> what? Then it's not going to improve by asking him that stupid question, is it? No, I guess not. In, um, problem, in fact, chances are it will erode your relationship because now he's going to feel like you're putting pressure on him. Yeah. I mean, you're right. <laughs> it probably would. So why would you risk ruining a good thing by making him feel that way? Just for a, just for a word, you know, like girlfriends. You're right. What is the point? Yeah, there is no point. I don't want to... Let him worry it. about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're I right. mean, you don't tell him you're not doing anything, do you? Yeah, I mean, we... It's clear we're not hooking up with other people. We're basically boyfriend and girlfriend. I mean, you know, we stay over each other's place every other night or something. It's we're pretty every we, other we night. Have, we don't have enough time to hook up with other people. I don't think both of us work really hard. So. Well, you can't speak for him. He might have time to hook up with no. other people. <laughs> but still, I shouldn't. I shouldn't ask the question. To no, no, you shouldn't. You just said we're both basically boyfriend and girlfriend. Then, then this whole conversation, as as one letter writer said this week, it's a mute point, right? I, I guess so. I I just wanted to know if I should <laughs> if I should bring it up or if I should just assume because you know what if then he's saying oh this other girl that I'm dating and I feel you know wah wah <laughs> oh no well then you'll know they, then they you will have had the conversation at that point <laughs> you're right that's another type of conversation but at least this way you remain the cool chick yeah not desperate not stink of death. I know. That's exactly what I don't want to seem like. Because I'm really not. I mean, I really... That's how you like seem just telling it to me. What? That That's what it seems like when you tell it to me. Like that clingy and crazy? Yes. This, you're trying to repress that side of you, but you can't help it. It's coming out. <laughs> but I didn't even know I had that side. That's the thing. I haven't been in a relationship since, like, freshman year of college. So I don't really know what's normal and what I should well look, if you have something that uh, this is the last time I'm going to say it. if you have something good and you're enjoying it then just enjoy it and don't ruin it by trying to put it you just said to me we're basically boyfriend and girlfriend okay you even told me that he has no time to hook up with other people so why do you need to ask this stupid question <laughs> you're right you're right Okay, thank you. If you really believe what you said to me, and this is where being truthful with yourself comes in, if you really believe what you just said to me, there is no need to ask that question. But the reason you want to ask that question is because you don't believe what you just said to me. Yeah, I, it's not that I think he's hooking up with anyone right now. I just am not sure that if the opportunity arose, he wouldn't jump on it. So well, if you are so close, then he'll tell you. That's true. That's true. He was and if crazy. you're not as close as you think, that's how you're going to find out. Yeah, I guess I just have to be patient then, huh? Now, then, forget you ever thought that thought, okay? Mm -hmm. Just enjoy what you have. Okay. Thanks. I actually feel much better about it now. Having <laughs> talked to you, I was kind of stressing out and scaring myself. God only knows why. 1-800-LIKE-KISS. Tom, Tom. 5 800 tom like this like this 866 tom like this like this 1-800-5800-TOM. You don't care about how a woman feels about you at all, Tom? Couldn't care less. The Tom Like This Show. Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. My name's Derek. I'm 25. Yes. And uh, you said you weren't sure. Um, you said to call if you weren't sure if you're in, your, you're in your demographic. If you think you're not in the target demographic, sure. Call in. Right. Uh, I'm 25, and I'm a gay guy, and I've been listening for about a year to your show, um, you know, on most days, and I was just wondering if, you're, if your teachings apply to uh, the homosexual community as well. Not only do they apply, but they are for anybody who wants to get laid. 
And I've always said, especially about gay men, that uh, gay men, above all, are men. And uh, men want to get laid. And they want the shortest distance between two points. Mm -hmm. No matter if you're straight or gay. All right. Straight men That's are very one. uncomfortable with that comparison, but it is something that gay men and straight men have in common. <laughs> That's true. We don't like dating. We like porking. <laughs> That's definitely true. I just got out of a three-year relationship, and it's, it's they're, they're kind of they're kind of the same as well. I hear you say say girls are because I was in a three-year relationship, and um, I got a domestic partnership, and then we broke up, and he moved out of state, and he hasn't signed the dissolution, so I'm kind of still legally down to him. Oh my goodness! Already, yeah. already, we're having these problems. Yeah. <laughs> But that hasn't, I'll bet that hasn't slowed you down. Are you getting more ass than the toilet seats over at the Abbey? <laughs> I was there last month, and yeah, yeah, things are going good now. <laughs> now, when you go to the Abbey, do you go next door to here? Do you also go there? I've been to here, Mother Load, the Abbey Cantina. Right. Um, yeah, I live in Long Beach, so I go to, I stay pretty local there, too. Don't even tell me how Mother Load got its name. I don't want to know. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, thanks a lot. And can you take me out Kobe style? Here you go, Derek. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Douglas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Good. I don't know if I fit your demographic. I am blind. I have three arms. You have three what? I'm in the Northeast. Wait, you're blind? You have three what? Three arms. You have three arms. Anyway. You do not. My best friend, he's got a some drug problem. I want to approach him. By the way, people say that I've got three arms, but that's not an arm. <laughs> Did we lose you there, Douglas? Sounds like we did. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Zach on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? It's going okay. Yeah, man. I will, I will call you to tell you about the guy yesterday with the lawsuits on McDonald's and stuff. Right. He loves to sue McDonald's. Yeah, I think that's retarded, man, because... um. um no one, McDonald's doesn't put a gun to people's head and making them eat hamburgers and stuff, bro. I mean, they go in there for hamburgers and no one's making them eat that, you know? So it's really not McDonald's fault or anything. Well, of course it's not McDonald's fault. I mean, my God, everybody loves McDonald's. Who hates McDonald's? Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. Uh, McDonald's is as American as hot apple pie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With a warning label on it that says it's very hot. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, I think the, I think he should do something else, man. Because I don't think that he should he should be he should be suing people. He should be suing McDonald's for. Well, the bottom don't... line, you know, when he files these lawsuits, here's the thing: if you like to eat at McDonald's or any other fast food place, when this guy files the lawsuits, obviously it increases McDonald's cost to do in business. What does that do to the price of food? It goes up. Right. He's not doing you any favors. Look, you know you're not supposed to abuse the great stuff they sell at fast food places. You know you're not supposed to do that. And if you don't do it, it's your own fault. Yep. Filing lawsuits is not going to make people be more responsible. It's not. Yeah, man. All right, Tom, take me out with the Jesus style and don't take me, bro. All right. Here you go, Zach. Thank you, Jesus. What did I do? Get off. You know what? Get off. Get off. Get off me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't taste me, bro. Don't taste me. I did Love that guy. This week was his one-year anniversary. His name is Andrew Meyer. His one-year anniversary. Don't tase me, bro. <laughs> Somebody uh, made don't tase me, bro ringtones. I think that's what I want is my ringtone. Even though it's already been around a year. Don't tase me, bro was 2007's quote of the year by the editor of the... Uh, Chosen uh, by the editor of the Yale Book of Quotations. Just love it. Andrew Meyer. We should try to get him on. 
we should find out like what the story was behind that. Then maybe we can get him to recreate that moment. Using tase as a verb. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jamil on the Tom Likas show. What's going on, Tom? Not much, Jamil. Father, I have sinned. What'd you do? Okay, so I was with a chick, you know, we've been together for a while, you know, and things were pretty cool, you know. One day, you know, the, the box of condoms is on E, and I say, okay, well, just this once, you know what I mean? I do that once, have an accident, but I said, but she says, don't worry about it, I'm going to get the morning after pill, no stress. Right. So we, we keep going on, you know, maybe about another month. I say, you know, things end, and I say, I tell her we have a long conversation on the phone. I say, you know what, I can't do this anymore. We're done. So the next day, she calls me late at night in the middle of the night, and I don't, I don't pick up the phone. I, I ignore her, go to sleep. The next day, I call and say, what was that about, calling me at 1.30 in the morning? She says, oh, I was feeling sick. I went to the hospital. I think I'm pregnant. There we go. So, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so, but she's like, again... You understand like, what we say on this program is, the minute they give you a pregnancy scare and you get through it, you got to cut them off at the knees. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so she's saying she's pregnant, but then she says, don't worry about it, I'm going to get in a, I'm gonna get an abortion. So I say, okay, cool, no worries, you know what I mean? We can still keep going our separate ways, but I continue to not want to see her, not want to call her. She's still trying to pursue a relationship. So it's getting it's getting confusing because... When I say when she when I said that okay I want to leave you alone then she says well I'm going to keep the baby now there and so we then go. I say so then I say okay well okay well I'll be involved in the baby's life but I don't I still don't want anything to do with you then she says okay well I'm going to get an abortion because I don't want anything to do with you then Perfect. you know what I mean so it's like so I don't even know if there is a baby anymore you know right because I'm like where are the odds of that one night being the, that one mistake being the, you know and it's, it was too perfect. The day I say, okay, I'm done with you, the next day you're pregnant, it was it was too perfect, you know? But Let me ask I, you this, Jamil. How long have you been a listener here? Uh, long enough to know better than this. Single mother. Uh, what do we tell you about that? Yeah. 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 So it's like, I want to know. It's like, you know, okay, I'm like, all right, if she is pregnant, okay, I can, you know, I just, it's seven months is a long time to wait. To, t to even find out if she's really pregnant or not, because I haven't seen her. You know, I, I, we have a mutual friend, mutual, right. because actually now supposedly she's three, three months, and she's not even showing, you know. And she'll call me from time to time, and I used to pick up, and every time I talk, she wants, hey, how you doing? You know, you want to come watch a movie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I'm thinking she's calling to tell me something about this baby that supposedly is in her stomach, but she never talks baby talk. There we go. <laughs> you know? And so, so then finally I stopped picking up her calls since I realized she's not going to call to talk business. I just stopped picking up her calls. Then, then after about five or six ignored calls, then she wants to leave a message saying, Oh, I've got a due date on the baby. You seem like you don't care. You know what I mean? And yeah. I just, it's just like, you know, so I'm like, it seems to me because she's went back and forth from keeping the baby to have an abortion at least four times to, to the, to the point where I'm like, you know, is there a baby? So, what, you know? Jamil, what did we tell you about getting involved with chicks like this? <sighs> don't do it. Don't do it. Looking to, to hold somebody down to be a father for the kid they have and maybe have some more. And now look where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I knew better. But it's, it's, it's like half of me is not even worried because half of me is like she's just full of it. You know, there's, there's no baby. But it's like only time will tell. And that's the thing. And I'm tired of I'm tired of waiting. Oh, my God. God! Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Dad, what's cracking? How you doing? Somebody's ass as soon as I get out of here. Damn, boy. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Coming to you from Hollywood. 1-800-5800-TALK. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. We continue with your calls here. 1-800-5800-TOM. Anything goes, anything at all. 
Jose on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, you were supposed to say my bank account and my ratings. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I know, but we don't uh, follow, we don't follow a script here. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, all right. I like that line, though. It's, uh, hey, um, I was wondering, um, what do you think about De La Hoya and Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao, fighting? That, that's on December 9th at the MGM Grand. I want to be at that fight. That That is going to be <laughs> one great fight. Is that really, is that what you think? Because... I do. Manny Pacquiao is like the hottest fighter in that weight class. Hot, hot, hot. But he's, uh-uh, he, he could have fought Antonio Margarito. Instead, he went with the little man. You well, know? Well, it's not a matter of whether who he could have gone with. Oscar De La Hoya is the, one of the great names in boxing. That's true, but And Pacquiao know, is the hottest fighter out there right now, I think. I don't know. I think he, he took the short way out. Well, I'm not concerned about what, what he could have done. You know, uh, this whole thing with boxing... Uh, you know, the uh, champions can always decide who their next opponent's going to be. And sometimes they choose challenging opponents, and sometimes they don't just to get a big paycheck. That's the way the boxing business works. But you don't think that'll be a great fight? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love both of them, but um, I'm going to go I'm for my money with Manny. Well, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, Oscar's had his day, and he's had a great career, and he's got a great future as a businessman, and everybody loves him to death. But uh, Manny Pacquiao, I've watched his last several fights on pay-per-view, and he's amazing. Yeah, he is. He's been knocking everybody out. So. Oh, my God, he's a machine. He's, he's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Tom. All right. Anyway, so, uh, can you take me out with client number nine? Client number nine, style. Here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. 1-800-5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Wendy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi. Good evening, Tom. How are you doing? Hi. Good evening. Hello. Hi. I, I guess I want to start by saying I'm a first time, long time. Right. I've listened to you for almost 13 years, ever since I moved out here to SoCal. Yeah. I love your show. I tried yesterday like crazy to get through to you to talk to you about your guardian angel topic. Yes, we asked people to call in who had been uh, protected by a guardian angel. Yes, and I believe that I have been um, several times throughout my life. Several times. Several times, but one in particular I'd like to share with you, if I could. Well, go ahead. All right, then. When I was 13, living with my aunt in Utah, um, I had my first boyfriend, and I snuck out my bedroom window at night to go meet him. And I did this pretty frequently. And I would lock my bedroom door from the inside and hop out the window and, you know, be out and about. And one night... <clears throat> I was out, we were cruising the streets, just goofing off like teenagers do, and all of a sudden I see my aunt's car cruising the streets, and I was freaking out, like, oh my gosh, how did she know that I was out? Because <clears throat> I'd been doing it for a while. Anyway, she caught me, and she was visibly shaken up, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong, but when she had time to calm down, she told me that she was in a dead sleep, and she heard my mother, who, by the way, had died when I was three, and this is when I was 13. She heard my mother saying to her, wake up, wake up, you need to go check on Wendy, you need to go check on Wendy. And she kind of tried to ignore it, but couldn't because the voice got loud. Wait a minute, you weren't rescued, but wait a minute, you weren't rescued at all. I wasn't. No, you, you snuck out to be with your boyfriend. Were you in trouble? No. So you were not rescued? Well, I was because something, well, who knows what could have happened to me that night. Who knows what could have happened to you? You were doing it regularly in Utah. Yeah, but this night in particular, for some reason. Your boyfriend ran out of condoms? <laughs> At 13, I wasn't experimenting just yet. <laughs> but what, I were you, what were you sneaking out and doing? Just, just goofing off. Playing hacky sack. Playing you know, the hacky sack. Uh, that's Utah. <laughs> running through the graveyard. Just running through the graveyard. You snuck out to go running through the graveyard. Yeah, we just did stupid stuff like kids do. But what were you rescued from? 
I don't know. That's the thing. You were not rescued from anything. Well, there could have been something unforeseen. But there coulda, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Exactly. But there, but there wasn't. But there, but there probably would have been had my mother. Why do you say home. that? What's that? What do you mean there? Well, there probably would have been. Why do you say that? Because otherwise, my mother wouldn't have come to my aunt. Your aunt had a dream. Your aunt had a dream, Donnie. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a dream. So yes, it was a dream. It was a dream. Well, I wasn't there, but she she describes it as not a dream, like that there was a voice in the room with her that woke her up mm-hmm. and, and moved the bed and woke kind of like jostled her out of her sleep. I don't know. I and why do you assume that's a guardian angel? Well, because... And by the way, if your mom was such a great guardian angel for you, how come you were getting out of the house all the time like that? Well, I guess that was her way maybe of stopping me because I didn't after that. Well, I mean, she's a guardian angel. She knew about all the times you got out. Why didn't she stop you sooner? I, well, I don't know the answer to that. She was getting text messages from a bunch of teenagers. Why? Yeah, I don't know, Tom. I just I just kind of feel it in my gut that, that, that it was something. No, it's, it's, it's your own religious belief, but it is no proof that that's what it was and you know, there's no logic to what you're saying because, you know, it, 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 first of all, you weren't rescued from anything. You were not in any danger that you knew of, and you had done it repeatedly before. Yeah, but I feel like something crazy could have happened that night if she hadn't intervened on my behalf. Well, but, but that, again, that's that's your opinion. There was no sign that anything crazy was about to happen. And by the way, you were in Utah. Right. Well, things happen in Utah. Yeah, like what? Somebody falls off their skis. Somebody yeah. loses their consecrated undergarments and has to go to the store at the LDS store and buy a new pair. Exactly. I mean, come on. What happens in Utah? Please. I don't know. Something bad would have happened to me. I know it, though. Oh, boy. Somebody interrupted our hacky sack game. It's a good thing my mother came back from the dead to tell me. Jesus. One eight. I, by the way, I said I wouldn't make fun of the callers when we did the topic. That that is over now. Now I'm saying all the things I wish I could have said when we did the topic. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Star on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Are you calling on Skype? Sorry, what? Yeah, it must be Skype. Tom, babe, I'm sorry, hon. I'm on my cell. Um, I have a problem, and I need your help, and only you can help me. But you can't hear me. I can hear you okay. I'm just worried you can't hear me. I, I, I have responded to you. Okay. <laughs> if I couldn't hear you, how could I respond to what you were saying? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, have you, have you run this by in your head a couple of times there, like... He's saying something in response to what I said. Maybe well, that means he can hear me. It sounded like you said my name wrong, so that's why I was wondering. Is your name Star? Yes. Didn't I like say? Stuff, though. I did not say stuff. That's your phone. Okay, I'm sorry then. That's my sorry. Stuff? What kind of name is that? I don't know. People got weird nicknames. Unless your last name is me. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> I need your help, Dad. What is it, darling? I got a stalker from a one-night stand. Oh, boy. This this guy, he found me online, and I know the rules. Don't do the Internet thing, but he sounded really interesting. And so let me, this wasn't just the Internet. This was like Craigslist, wasn't it? No, no, it was just online. He was searching for some girl in the valley, you know. Where was he searching? No, now I have to know where this was. Where where was this? Profile. What is it called? AOL Profile. It, like, A- it was an AOL Profile. Uh, he found me that way. So he fa- Wait, so you had some kind of provocative profile indicating that you were available, you were up for anything? It was not even... Photo of you in a bikini when you were 15 or something? You, you had that up there? Huh? I'm sorry? Never mind. And, uh, all right, so there was something in your profile that indicated you were interested in 
wanton sex with complete strangers, right? Not really, no. Well, then, he just found me, and he was interested, and I'm down for anything, so... They were down for anything with anyone? Um, uh, yeah. Really? Basically, yes. Basically, yes. Donna, if you'd lose 50 pounds, you wouldn't have to be that way. You could be more selective. I'm selective enough. <laughs> That's not selective at all. Hey, I'm sorry I like having fun. <laughs> now, Donna, there's nothing wrong with having fun, but let me tell you a story, Donna. Uh, once I worked at a radio station where I did a dating show, okay, and people would call in, they wanted a date. And the funniest call I ever got was from a woman. She was very old. She was way outside the demographic. And here's what she called it and said, I swear this is true. She called it and said this. She said, I'm 65 years old. I'll do anything with anyone. That sounds like you. No, I ain't that desperate. <laughs> Some guy ran. You're the kind of girl who would have sex with a wrong number. Are you kidding me? Some guy is searching through the profiles on AOL and he checks females only with photos or whatever, and he finds you. And so he sends you an instant message. You say you're up for anything. Yeah, but I didn't make it out like that with him. But you went out and had sex with the guy. I don't, I don't do the internet thing, you know? You it's did the internet different. thing. No, I did it with him. That was a one-time thing, and I learned my lesson, and I'm sorry for disobeying the rules, but what am I going to do about him? He's blowing up my phone. He's sending me emails. I've blocked him. Everybody. Call the police. The Tom Likas Show.